comes from. And what have they been up to? Or, or, or rather, and, what is the government doing that seems to lead back to Tufton Street? Well, so interestingly, earlier this year, we brought in new legislation, which sounds quite arcane, but I think called the checkoff. It's basically to do with unions and union dues. If you work in the public sector, often your union dues are subtracted from your wages before you before they even hit your bank account. It's called a checkoff. There's long been a lot of opposition to this by the kind of people you've talked about at the, at the start of your show, at the start of this segment, James. A lot of people in government, a lot of people in the Conservative Party, and a lot of people in Tufton Street, and particularly taxpayer alliance, have long had a bee in their bonnet about this. So we brought in new legislation that says actually you have to pay for this. So public bodies will now have to recruit money from unions if you want to do this checkoff. Sounds complicated, but essentially what it means is it'll be harder for unions to get money from their from uh, from union members, and also makes it less likely to uh, to to for people to join unions. So you might ask, where does this legislation come from? Mm. That was a question I asked. It was like it's quite interesting. It's come in. It's been quite a bit of opposition to it from MPs and the Lords. And lo and behold, I got the documents for the impact assessment, and they're quite remarkable in that pretty much the only piece of analysis that's cited for this is a report from 2014 by the Taxpayers Alliance, who surprise, surprise, say this is a terrible, this is this is something that we should got rid of, and we should bring in the legislation that's now come to pass. I, you know, oddly, I, and just on a similar theme, I saw Kemi Badenoch citing some research from Civitas the other day to, to prove a point she was making about Islamophobia. And Civitas is, of course, an offshoot of the Institute for Economic Affairs, which is just around the corner from 55 Tufton Street, although I think Civitas might, might actually be on it. And, and another example, which I'm sure you spotted, of the government now using these opaquely funded organisations as if they were authorities on the areas... Uh, upon which they are paid by their mysterious donors to to pronounce. Why should my listeners be worried about this, Peter? Well, I think fundamentally, if you look at this legislation I've been writing about today, the government itself admits that the figures are out of date. It says they're not accurate. It says it's only going to save about 1.5 million across 28,000 public bodies. So there's a question like, why would you, why is that the thing you're going to do at a certain time when we've got a lot of issues in the public sector, is this thing you're going to want to do? But more generally, I think it does speak to this, uh, this way in which People where we don't know where their money comes from. Every so often we see some, we see a lot of, you know, most of the money we ever see goes into Tufton Street, comes from corporate donors. So there's a big issue. If you've got corporate powers able to fund what are fakely funded lobby groups who are then able to influence government policy, it's quite, it's not that hard to see where the, where the problems might be because we fundamentally,